cannot stop now. You're listening to The Point Is on KZFR Radio. My name is Sue Hildebrand, and I'll be with you until the 11 o'clock hour. In a presentation this past August at a, at a Chico City Council meeting, Police Chief Mike Maloney explained why our region needs to purchase the Linco Bearcat. The Chico Police called, call it an armored rescue vehicle, a vehicle capable um, of withstanding a 50 caliber rifle assault. Critics call it a tank. And, uh, regardless of what you call it, the $250,000 armored police vehicle is coming to Chico. And it's paid for by a grant from the Federal Department of Homeland Security. Since the terror attacks on September 11th, both President Bush and President Obama have dramatically increased the funding for the Department of Homeland Security. This terrorism-focused federal agency now gives away $3 billion annually to state and local governments across the country to purchase this type of equipment. The manufacturers of this vehicle is Massachusetts-based Lenco Armored Vehicles, who, according to their website, quote, meet the needs of SWAT, Homeland Security, counterterrorism, force protection, military police, hazmat team, and dignitary protection applications. On December 15th, in, in the small town of Keene, New Hampshire, in a vote of 12 to 1, my next guest was the lone voice in opposing the acquisition of this vehicle by his small community of 23,000 people. Joining us from the city of Keene, New Hampshire, is City Council Member Terry Clark to talk about what his community is doing to stop the Bearcat from entering his city. I'm so happy to welcome you to The Point Is, Councilman Clark. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Well, Councilman Clark, if you could um, talk to us for a minute about, you know, just give us a quick overview about the process over there in Keene. On December 15th, there was a vote. And the vote was, we're going to take this money and we're going to buy a Bearcat. What, why is this still at question? Well, let me, let me start where it really happened. Uh, most of the process really happened in a conclave or, or behind the scenes. Uh, the original quote from Lenco was sent to the Keene Police Department in June of 2010. And the police chiefs of the county towns uh, signed off on it in October of 2010. Uh, I didn't hear about it until December 6th. Uh, that's the first time that it appeared on the public record. Uh, the vote was scheduled for December 15th. Uh -huh. um, well, during those nine days that we had to think about it, I, I, um, I stood up and said, you know, I, I just think it's unconscionable that, uh, that we're cutting education. Uh, gosh, we're, we're cutting few assistance for elderly people up here um, and, and, and those sort of things. And how do we dare to accept a $286,000 grant to, to, to accept this armored car. I, I just don't understand it, so I voted against it. Um, the other counselors uh, didn't see it my way, apparently. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the police chief came up with a very, very good argument. You know, uh, you know uh, police and uh, fire people are very good at coming up with scenarios uh, that scare the heck out of you. And, uh, you know, people say, well, if, if it'll save one life down the road, then why not accept it? That kind of thing. So um, they, uh, they, they passed it. One of our city councilors uh, actually works for Homeland Security, so he had to recuse himself. So the vote was, uh, was uh, 13 to 1. Um, two days later, the newspaper, uh, the King Sentinel here, got inundated with letters to the editor. Uh, on a Saturday news program in our local uh, uh, radio station, got inundated by calls. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, hundreds of people uh, were writing letters and calling in and, and saying, what is this? This is nonsense. What, what, what do we need this thing here for? So um, three people started uh, local petitions, and uh, they turned in ultimately 500 petitions to the city council and... Uh, Unfortunately, the, uh, the, the, the mayor um, accepted those as informational and took no action on it. So um, through a um, uh, procedural uh, thing, uh, because the vote happened in December, uh, we were able to reconsider it in the next calendar year, which is only you know, uh, three weeks. So I wrote a letter asking for reconsideration and for a public hearing. Uh, we held a public hearing on February 9th. 
and uh, more than 100 people showed up, uh, more than the room uh, uh, carries uh, the fire code, so they wouldn't let any more people in there. And uh, the, the outcry was, was overwhelmingly uh, uh, in, you know, against the Bearcat. Uh, only three people uh, who were former police officers spoke in favor of it. So um, the, the public hearing happened, and they took input, and the, uh, the committee uh, referred it back to the city council as informational, which is sort of a neutral motion. And when it comes before the council this Thursday, I plan to stand up and amend the motion uh, to rescind the December 15th decision. And, and, and Councillor Terry Clark, um, based on what you've seen in terms of uh, public support or public opposition to the acquisition of the Bearcat, do you think that you have changed any of the minds on your city council there in Keene? I have four votes that I know of right now. Um, the, uh, it, it, the, the sentiment is, you know, towards public safety is awful strong in this very conservative state, New Hampshire. Uh, they tend to be very law enforcement oriented. Um, so, you know, when you start uh, bantering around uh, uh, scenarios that, uh, well, gosh, they, some of them uh, could, could have come out of a, a Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. <laughs> um, but uh, when you start doing that, scaring people and, uh, uh, then, you know, the city councilors, they, well, they're just like congressmen, you know. They, they don't want to be the one to vote against apple pie. Right. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to come out. I need four more votes. Um, and if we've done anything, if, even if it doesn't pass, then we've, uh, then we've uh, brought this to the light of day. And maybe the process of, uh, of uh, applying for grants will be more open. In other words, uh, if we'd have known about this a year ago, if the public would have known about this a year ago, if there had been more public discussion, uh, probably would have given uh, the councillors more political cover to uh, vote the right way. And if you're just tuning in, you're listening to The Point, is we're talking with a uh, councillor, he's a city council member of, um, uh, uh, of the city council in Keene, New Hampshire, and... Terry Clark it was the lone opposition voter to acquiring a $286,000 grant from the Department of Homeland Security to purchase the Lenco Bearcat, the, the same make and model of the, of the uh, armored rescue vehicle or tank that the Chico um, Police Department is going to acquire. So if you have any questions for the counselor, give us a call at 530-895-1114. At so, Counselor Clark, I'm curious, um, what is your budget? Your town is only 23,000 people. What is your budget there? Do you know right offhand? Well, the total budget, uh, our, our budgets are broken down between the city, the, the school, uh -huh. uh, and the county, our, our tax base and everything. So uh, the city is around $20 million. $20 million. Okay. And you're getting a grant of $286,000 from the Department of Homeland Security. This money is basically free money. And so can you talk about why you oppose to getting free money from the federal government for your small town? Well, the Huffington Post uh, recently reported um, the Lenco representative saying that the, uh, the Bearcat program uh, – was their way of getting a piece of the $34 billion domestic terrorism market. Now, in my mind, that makes this grant nothing but a thinly veiled poster child for war profiteering. I mean, this is exactly the kind of thing that Eisenhower warned us against when he said, beware the military-industrial complex. Now, now, here it is, right here in front of us, a clear example of waste and fraud that politicians all over the place say they want to rout out of government. So I'm asking my uh, colleagues, what are they going to do about it? I mean, are they going to accept it? Because if we don't, you know, some other town will. And are they going to justify it by buying into the same fear and shame tactics that the Hawks use when they want to justify a budget expense? You know. Um, so, well, Councillor Clark, it sounds like a, 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 a wonderful argument for a very conservative town and state that you live in. And, and what is the reaction to to folks when you say, you know, this is just a waste of money? Well, you know, that's the, that's the, that's the thing. Um, I've gotten hundreds and hundreds of calls and emails, people on the street talking to me, 
I mean, I, I've talked to uh, uh, every, every every range of person, you know, from from uh, from uh, Republicans, Democrats, uh, independents, uh, housewives, mechanics, uh, you know, uh, uh, former citizens of the year. I mean, you, you know, the spectrum is wide. It, it, this isn't this isn't something you know. Everybody has a reason to be against this, whether it's whether it's uh, budgetary or whether they're afraid of police power or uh, some other reason. They're, 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 just, uh, they're just a lot of opposition. I just don't know where to start. It just <laughs> covers all the bases, and I, I, I'm, I'm just stymied right. at how fickle elect, you know, elected officials can be and how afraid of, uh, of one or two uh, uh, opinions that they might hear, you know, I mean, that's a problem with O'Neill in Congress. I mean, if, if we don't, on the local level, you know, say no, right. you know, we're not going to accept this thing. And, and you know, you're calling me from California. This was in the Daily Mail in, in, uh, in, in England. It's been on the Huffington Post. It's been all over this place. This is getting national coverage. Right. If, if we were to say no to this, Congress would hear that. Mm-hmm. And they might get a little political coverage. You know, and they, and they, 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 might, they might say, okay, you know what? It's okay to vote against this sort of thing. We don't have to worry. You know, uh, I, it's really unfortunate that it takes something like that for them to, to, right. to, to have the courage, the political courage to actually stand up for convictions. But unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Well, Counselor uh, Clark, I have somebody on the air who has their radio up too loud. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hello, thank you. Uh, Councilman, thank you very much for uh, setting up for what's right. Um, I'm a combat veteran that was involved with uh, heavy vehicles and such. And I think what a lot of people also don't realize, even if you get this grant for, quote, a free vehicle, um, what's a long-term maintenance cost and training cost? I mean, your, your town is going to be massively burdened with, I mean, this, uh, you know, giant war elephant. But then you're going to be responsible. I mean, if, you know, you were forced to get it, you're, you know, I'm presuming Homeland Security isn't going to be paying for all the future maintenance costs. That, that's right. Um, there, there is, um, you know, it, it essentially goes into the fleet of the city of Keene, just like a snowplow or a cruiser or anything else, a piece of property. And um, the uh, our chief of police, as I, uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, talked to all of the state police, excuse me, the, the local police departments in, in the county. There were 17 or 18 other uh, towns who had signed on to an agreement to uh, put a hundred dollars a year each into a fund to uh, to maintain this thing um, because well you know it's an it's a Ford F550 uh, frame with with uh, oh I, I, 20 ton or 12 ton I think yeah 12 ton uh, uh, body on top of it so wow you know uh, the gas mileage is going to be horrible and uh, I think you know it costs three hundred dollars just to change the oil in the thing. <laughs> uh, the, the irony there is is that uh, the town of uh, one of the towns of, uh, uh, down below Keene just sent uh, all of the city councilors a letter. Uh, the, the board of selectmen sent us a letter saying, "Hey, we didn't know anything about this." The chief of police uh, just signed on to this and didn't tell us, didn't ask us, didn't give. Uh, you know, we don't have any money budgeted for this thing. Uh, turns out that three other towns that I know of uh, also didn't know anything about it. Uh, wow. So there, there will, will be other expenses. Uh, it will be part of the fleet, and you know, you know, the manpower that um, you know you're going to have to uh, put in place uh, to send this thing out. It, you know, uh, it's well, going to cost. And something. just, just for training and the, the yearly, you know. Um, Maintenance costs, of tra- you know, the training for the new drivers and what have you. I'm not very really, uh, familiar with the uh, East Coast uh, militia concept, but uh, are there a lot of militia groups driving around in armored vehicles with 50 caliber machine guns uh, on the East Coast that I <laughs> haven't heard about? <laughs> uh, the city of Keene uh, uh, has been, has been uh, it, it, you know, we, we've been here for a little over 250 years. Uh, we've never lost a police officer in the line of duty. Uh, we, we don't have those kind of things happening over here. Uh, you know, we, we, we've had a couple murders in the last 20 years. Generally, there's one about every 10 years or so. Um, you know, we, we do have distraught people uh, who, uh, who aren't getting adequate mental health care mm-hmm. um, and things like that. 
um, but that just uh, begs another question is uh, what can we do as local governments to contribute to national security? You know, we can do things, you know, uh, you know we, we can feed our people. We can make sure they're well-educated. We can make sure they're healthy. We can make sure we have a strong economy. And I think those things will do more uh, to help uh, build a strong national defense than having all of these uh, militarized. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, th thank you both for your great work. Thanks. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. Uh, Councillor um, Councillor Clark, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to the point is we're talking about the Bearcat, uh, the Lenco Bearcat Armored Rescue Vehicle, or also known as a tank that we're getting here in Chico, um, and it's also they're 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 being distributed throughout the country, including to unless uh, my guest can stop it, it's going to Keene, New Hampshire. So Councillor Clark. Um, you mentioned that, you know, you have some distraught people, and that's because they're not getting the mental health that they need. So let's imagine for a minute if that $286,000 did not come as a grant from Homeland Security for a Bearcat. Are there other ways that you would rather spend that money that you think would directly benefit your small community? Well, the U.S. Department of Justice thinks so. Um, they... Uh just criticized the, the state of New Hampshire for failing to provide adequate community-based services uh -huh. for people with mental illnesses. Uh, we've just elected a Tea Party uh, uh, sta uh, state representative uh, body uh, that is cutting everything. They're 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 slashing everything that that has any any anything to do with uh, providing benefits to, to any citizen. It's it's absolutely crazy. Uh, yeah, we could, like I said, take a lot of initiatives locally and through the state to make sure that we have adequate health care, that we have adequate uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mental mental health health care in places for these people to get get help. Uh, uh, alcohol uh, uh, rehabilitation programs, drug rehabilitation programs. We can be uh, uh, we can do a lot more with those programs to combat you know the war on drugs uh, than 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 all of the money that we can send uh, down building, you know, uh, building walls to, to, to stop, uh, you know, drugs from coming in uh, the borders and mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and so, Councillor Clark, what my last question for you is, um, is there something, I mean, I think it, it sounds like everything I've read and from what you've said, you are the one that sort of started uh, the movement towards opposing um, the Bearcat, but have you seen the community, you've said letters um, coming in, is there any sort of coordinated effort to s from the community to stop the Bearcat from coming to Keene? Well, there's a small group of people um, who, who, uh, who, who typically uh, uh, boycott things and such like that, but uh, uh, I, I wouldn't say that there's a... No, that, no, I, don't, I wouldn't say that there is a concerted uh, uh, effort that's centralized or anything. Um, I, I've thought about doing that myself, but um, but you know, you, you, you get you just let people go and and say the things they're going to say and start doing the things they're going to do. The petition drives and uh, uh, people calling into radio programs, people talking to their counselors, and uh, um, I, I think that um, that has taken off. And uh, whether I had anything to do with it, uh, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't really know. But uh, I think if this, if this happens, if we're able to stop this, it's going to be because uh, people stood up and said no. And that just might happen. It, it just might happen because, uh, because you are still in the process. That just to so you know. Our city council didn't have the authority to approve or um, reject that grant. So it, the grant is being received by our county governments, and so they 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 really ran around the authority of our of our city government. A very interesting way um, that 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 was achieved. And so I, I think we're looking to other communities to see what you've done, and you really have been an inspiration. As I told people yesterday, who, that I was going to have you on the air. Um, I know I have a lot of folks tuning in specifically to hear you. Um, so I, I wish you well on the first, and I will follow along with the, um, the progress you're making over there in Keene, New Hampshire. Thank you so very much. for you know, This has been wonderful. I, hope, uh, I don't know if anybody from uh, 
Dean or Cheshire County is listening, but uh, if they are, then uh, call your city counselor. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful weekend. And like I said, I'll be following along and maybe I'll bring you back on the air, especially if you've done that great work and you've been successful in keeping out the Bearcat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. That's Counselor Terry Keene from, uh, I'm sorry, Terry Clark from uh, Keene, New Hampshire, the lone voice opposing the $286,000 grant from the Department of Homeland Security to, to bar purchase the Lenco Bearcat. We will definitely stay tuned into that particular effort. That wraps up this hour of The Point Is. I want to thank the folks that made this hour of The Point Is possible. You, the generous uh, member of KZFR, and this hour was also made possible by all.